Hello, I'm Ryan, and welcome to The True Connoisseur, my channel where I discuss perfume as personal experience, as cultural object. And today we are taking a break from my series about tobacco perfumes to talk about a different note. That note is the note of frankincense, also known as olibanum, and it's a note that I really had to come to terms with in my journey in this hobby. Uh, when I was starting to get into fragrance in a serious way, it was a note that really kind of um, turned me off. I, I found it a bit challenging sampling the, you know, iconic fragrances of Bertrand Duchefort at that time, who is really uh, one of the greats when it comes to perfume um, centered on frankincense as a note. Uh, I really didn't love how it worked um, on my skin in particular, um, and I found the churchy associations that occur with that note really off-putting. Indeed, frankincense is one of those notes that has a sort of uh, ancient feeling about it. I mean, it's certainly well attested to throughout the the spectrum of human history cross, across cultures that frankincense is one of the iconic notes in perfumery. I mean, it is so central to uh, many societies, both in their sort of ritualistic um, practices, as well as in um, personal sense. Um, it's one of the great perfume materials in that way. It's classic perfume. Um, but the, tr the association that I primarily had with frankincense coming into this hobby was the association with church incense. And it was one of those things where I had to kind of get past the dissonance of, of wearing an aroma that could evoke that a little bit. Um, certainly it was very foreign from most fragrances you've seen in the mainstream in um, the West. You know, it is not particularly common in the designer space in any way to release a truly frankincense-centric fragrance. It's just not that common. Um, it's very common in what we've called like niche, luxury, artisanal perfumery to have these sort of incense-focused creations um, in the West, but it really didn't, you know... Uh, come into Western perfumery in a way uh, that presented frankincense in almost a, a solo floor fashion, um, or at least gave it such a starring role that it was the dominant force of a perfume. Um, if you can think of examples where that might have been the case, I may have missed those, so by all means share them with me in the comments. But my, my sense coming into this hobby was really that this wasn't a, a smell that I associated with something you would wear personally. Something shifted for me. And I, there, there's one particular perfume over here, and it'll start the conversation that, that shifted my attitude towards frankincense. When I picked up this perfume, I wasn't looking for a frankincense perfume. And once I had it, the note, clicked. Um, it's, it's sometimes that ca the case with, uh, at least for me, with notes in perfumery or with flavors in food that sometimes I just need the right context in order for my brain to begin understanding it. Um, it just needs the right compliments and suddenly I understand what that particular note or taste is bringing to the table there and how it can make sense in the broader scheme of things. And this fragrance did this for me for frankincense. And unfortunately, um, this along with, well, I think this is the only one I'm talking about. Well, there are two perfumes over here that have discontinued, but this is one of them. Um, and it's hard to get. I really wish it wasn't because I would love to share it with you all. It is one of the best fragrances I've tried in this style, and so few people have gotten to try it, but I'll, I'll talk about it again. Um, it's uh, Xenia's Passion from the Elements of Man collection that briefly came out. There were a number of scents in it. There was a pretty good tobacco scent in that line too, but Passion 
is their incense fragrance, but it is, I, I picked it up because it was uh, acclaimed for being a boozy fragrance. Um, and there is a booziness in this that is very lush and sweet. So it's a, it's a simple structure. You get a lot of like sort of like boozy richness at the top. This is a very decadent sort of celebratory frankincense. Frankincense is the through line. This is mostly frankincense um, presented very clearly and uh, prominently. But it's accented with uh, this wonderful, rich, not not photorealistic in any way, sort of like boozy opening. I think, I'm trying to remember what's in the note pyramid that they kind of technically call it. As always with boozy notes, they tend to be a little bit abstract and perfume. So when people are like, I smell rum or cognac or whiskey, it's always a, you know, Vorschach blot effect. And sometimes we're being led by the note pyramid there. I wouldn't say... Anyone who smelled this in isolation would, would think of this as a booze perfume. Um, but it is rich and sweet and, and floral, at least, in the top. And it, it gives this sense of um, a celebratory feeling. I, I, I often like to wear this around the holidays, around Christmas time. It has that sort of warmth and decadence about it, a sort of jubilant personality. In the base below the frankincense note is a very well-executed, tasteful amber. And then the frankincense just sits in the middle, and it is just so beautifully calibrated. It is this wonderful golden shimmering frankincense. Frankincense as a material can have many different facets. It can, it can skew sort of lemony and green. It can skew woody. Um, in some of the perfumes we're going to talk about, it can skew earthy, and that's really interesting. In this, it's almost golden. It's almost like a gilded perfume. Um, well, I just, I just picture light dancing upon like a golden reflective surface when I smell passion. It is really so good and it is such a shame it wasn't uh, part of any well-established lineup because I think um, folks who really like this note would, would really uh, respond well to this perfume. Um, if you're looking for something in the same vein, I mean, it's not... I think it's better than the things I'm about to mention, but it's not worlds apart from the space in which like something like Tom Ford's Discontinued Sahara Noir and its, its um, other, other companions are. But uh, it doesn't... It, it, what this doesn't really have is the strong smoky facets that you sometimes get in frankincense dominant perfumes. There's no sense of that sort of like burning sensor vibe. Like it really just feels resinous and, and smooth. And again, I, I don't know a better word to describe it than sort of um, glistening and sparkling, like, like specks of gold dust reflecting light in the midst of kind of like a, a sort of like a crimson backdrop almost. Um, that's kind of what I get from Passion. It's a warm, dark uh, scent with like flickers of gold in the midst. Like, uh, like if you were looking at Garnet and you saw gold reflected in it. It's, it's really beautiful stuff. And that fragrance was what helped me start to appreciate the note because it it shifted in my mind away from some of the more sober and austere and contemplative um, takes on frankincense um, towards a more warm, inviting, dare I say, a little bit like seductive kind of space for that note. And, it, and in seeing that facet, I was able to kind of better appreciate how it works. And some of these are actually a little bit more um, sober-minded, but it was interesting that that was kind of what 
made it click for me, probably because it was also connected to what uh, that sort of like boozy jubilance. Again, I don't think it's a particularly uh, booze-centric fragrance in any meaningful sense, but that sort of decadence was what I was looking for at the time. It was my phase of perfume collection where I was very into boozy notes. Um, and so it worked for me quite well. Um, what I ended up finding after this was I went through a quest kind of looking for things similar to it, and I never really found another one that was doing that sort of decadent frankincense in the same way, though I would say of these fragrances, I'm going to go to the one that feels the closest to it, and this is the one that I have uh, talked about substantially. I have a whole video dedicated to just me unboxing this perfume, but it is in many ways the appropriate companion to this, and that is um, Filippo Sorcinelli, Notre Dame, Notte di Natale, um, which is a little bit more serious-minded than passion, um, but this is, again, uh, frankincense with a lot of orange blossom and sour cedar, um, some chocolatey patchouli. Um, it's a very dark fragrance, but that it still has a wonderful warmth. The orange blossom is giving the warmth uh, to that frankincense, and together um, it works quite well. You get this... Uh, frankincense can have a very strong metallic quality, especially depending on the variety of incense that's used. Obviously, it's um, there are different forms of uh, frankincense. And here it has that sort of like metallic quality alongside those other notes, giving it uh, a nice, a nice like high pitched tone across what is otherwise a kind of rich, dark stew of spices and orange blossom and, and woody tones. Um, really lovely stuff. I love this stuff. I feel like these two fragrances kind of are kin in some way. And then let's talk about two fragrances that are also, um, it's interesting as I look at this, uh, most of these fragrances are from Italian uh, houses. Um, the, the next two emphasize the sort of green facets of frankincense. Um, in fact, now that I'm looking at this, I realize I left out one of the fragrances, so I will just mention it, but it's not here, but it would fall into this category, and that is um, Apotecar Tepe's The Holy Mountain. If you want to hear more about that, you can watch my top 10 of all time uh, video, uh, top 10 favorite fragrances. I talk about it there, it's one of mine. But this does a similar thing to that, but it's a lot more um, wearable. I don't, I thought when I got this that I, I probably wouldn't keep it, but I've been wearing it a bunch, so um, I guess it's sticking around, and that is um, Profumum Roma's uh, Arso, which is a kind of pine frankincense. Um, it's, it's kind of sweet and sappy in the way that you would get from a uh, pine needle fragrance like um, Fiona Ghee, but that What's nice about the frankincense in this is it feels very outdoorsy, and that's the same thing I love about the Holy Mountain, which again is not featured here because I didn't pull it out of my cabinet. Um, but it, it brings out this sort of outdoorsy smoke characteristic, and you'll actually notice that a lot of desert-themed fragrances or warm air uh, fragrances that are meant to be carrying like warm air currents will use frankincense uh, smoky tones to kind of create that feeling of... Um, of, of kind of warm smokiness. And that's certainly the case with Arso. Um, some people exaggerate just how smoky Arso is, like burning woods. It's not really that way, but there is a smoky resonance to it, a little bit more like as if you were actually um, burning frankincense in like a sensor or something like that, and the smoke was wafting around with, with pine needles. Um, and the pine needles here are very photorealistic. Um, what makes it such 
such a, a nice fragrance and so easy to wear is how dry Arso is. Um, it, it wears well even in like warm weather because it stays pretty dry. The pine it adds that like green facet. So it's it's actually as simple as it is. Uh, it's really easy to wear. Um, and I enjoy all of those notes, so sticking around, I think. But the next one is a green incense that I think is is really superb. Um, really lovely take on frankincense here. Unfortunately, this is discontinued. If if it sounds good, you can find it. But I I mean, it's honestly, um, I I think there in the vast world of frankincense perfumes, there's probably something else like it out there. I just haven't found it yet. But this was the one I found. I went through a sample of this and kind of started to crave it. So this is um, Pineda Nero Incenso. Um, Nero Incenso, Black Incense, um, does a wonderful, this is the more lemony side of frankincense. Um, it's, it's lemony, balsamic frankincense with a lot of licorice and this sort of sour cedar, which again is really bringing out these citrusy tones in that sort of lemony frankincense. It is very green and dark and cool. It's kind of aloof. Um, again, like Arso, very simple compositionally. There's 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 not much more than the combination of of elements at play, but it's also more than the sum of its parts because the accord it creates is not widely replicated, right? This is this is a really interesting dark green frankincense. It feels very outdoorsy, um, but very, I don't know. I don't know, very mysterious in its own way because it's such so aloof in posture. It's it's kind of like shadowy, a shadowy dark green enclosure of some kind. Really lovely stuff, uh, Nero and Chen. So, um, I I uh, wish again, like like Zinya Passion, it hadn't been discontinued. It's discontinued, so you'll have to hunt for it if you if you want to look for it. I apologize. I don't really love talking about discontinued fragrances on this channel because I really wish everything was just still available for everybody. Um, but you know, it's it's one of the my reference points for that note, so I don't know how to not talk about it. Um, next up, we're kind of moving towards something in the same space. Though this is a very smoky fragrance. Um, I've talked about this before. This is um, Fuea Dunas de Encuerpo, the dunes of the body. It is salty, briny, smoky. Um, I think of like the Caspian Sea or maybe the Dead Sea. Um, it's meant to smell like salt on skin. It, it, it's 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 got sandalwood and oud, um, but but what is really giving it its character is this strong frankincense through line. And this is really getting into the smoky, earthy character of frankincense. Um, and the next two will also do that to different degrees. Um, this is especially kind of earthy and salty because of all the other elements it's, it's mixed with here. Um, the oud in particular is very earthy and dry. It really is unusual. I, I get like a kind of olive brine thing going on in it, though there's no particular olive note. Um, so dry, smoky, dark, heavy stuff. It's pretty pungent. I love it to pieces. Um, and I, I, I kind of was immediately struck by it because of how nicely it was doing that sort of frankincense smoke effect. Um, really beautiful. And uh, I think I've talked about it for, before too, so you can you can see me talk about it in some of my other videos. But uh, this next one is um, Bakur, 
by Aquaflor, um, uh, which is a really unusual take on Omani frankincense, which is one of a very particular prized variety of frankincense, and it has a very distinct character. It is different from uh, the standard, what I would say, churchy frankincense that a lot of us are familiar with in uh, like Duchefort's perfumes. The, the Omani frankincense has a sweetness unto itself. Um, it can be very metallic, but it's also very earthy simultaneously. And this is this is pretty much that. There's a little bit of spice. I think I think there's some metallic cinnamon bringing out the metallic quality in Omani frankincense in this. Um, it kind of sits at, this perfume sits at kind of two registers. It has this high-pitched note, which is the, the frankincense up at the top, this sort of like metallic uh, high-pitched range. And then the base is earthy um, and woody in a way that I, I really, really enjoy. Um, it's, it's kind of all fairly abstract aside from the frankincense. So you can really tell um, that this was meant to really just foreground that that note and that the ad copy bears that out, but it really is embodied well in this perfume. I've, I've really loved wearing this um, and I really love its treatment of the note in the way that it's particularly bringing out um, the metallic facets. This is almost is like, I've described uh, frankincense as sometimes having a good golden quality um, this skews in a kind of silvery quality um, because of how metallic it ends up feeling. It, it, I get that kind of like coin in your mouth feeling from it a little bit. It's really interesting and uh, particularly well done. Now this last one was recommended to me by someone and I was very skeptical about it because the brand, I frankly, you know, I try not to judge a book by its cover, but like, uh, it's very hard. We judge with our eyes. Everybody does judge a book by its cover instinctively. Um, and this brand is called Oman Luxury, which is just such a, a almost crass name in the sense of like, uh, presenting a luxury good that way. I mean, using the word luxury and a luxury good just feels so on the nose. I've never been one to like that sort of um, overt luxury pandering and perfume. Um, and this is part of a, of a whole line, but somebody told me this was a particularly great showcase for Omani frankincense. And also there's a, a, one of the reviewers I watch, um, Exotic Sense, uh, does a review of this that, you know, backed that up. And I, I, I generally enjoy watching uh, his videos as well. And Royal Incense, it's good. It's really good. Um, it's not my idea of super complex uh, perfume structure. In fact, many of these are not. In fact, um, these, this is a whole video of fragrances that are predominantly uh, more simple in structure so that the particular note in them shines. And, uh, you know, I, I like that sort of perfumery as long as the note in question is really rich and interesting unto its own. Um, you know, I, I love dense, complex, complex perfumery with a lot of stuff going on, but, uh, I'm, I'm probably more partial to fragrances that have a little bit more, um, simplicity and let, uh, certain notes really speak for themselves. And so in their own way, all of these fragrances do that to one extent or another. And this is, I'm actually going to wear this cause I'm not wearing anything. And I, I have been enjoying wearing this so much over the past week that I don't mind making this my scent right now. So it's, it's a frankincense bomb. It's an Omani frankincense bomb. Uh, you're getting a much richer, rounder 
version of Homani frankincense than when I than what I just talked about in Bakor, which was very metallic. This is rich, round, sweet, almost almost chewy, and it's backed up by uh, woods um, like a kind of rose floral. It technically lists. Uh, different floral notes, but I think it really just comes across like a, a rose. Um, there's a bit of honey in it, so the structure reminds me a little bit of Floris Honey Oud with um, with a lot of Omani frankincense up on top. There's no oud in it, so when I say it reminds me of Floris Honey Oud, it's more the, the, the rose and the honey playing together, and then you are just getting this wonderful overdose of Omani frankincense. Um, I would say of the, the perfumes I've talked about here today, um, Royal Incense really has, as far as the just isolated frankincense note, my favorite of the bunch. It just does so well to capture everything I have come to love about frankincense. Um, it's just so rich, so round, uh, almost, um, almost indulgent. I don't know how else to describe it. Like, uh, so if I started with, with passion as my journey here with frankincense, um, the frankincense in this is more, uh, it's, it's more ethereal. This, this frankincense is, is rich, but in like a chewy, thick way, and, uh, man, I, I love it. And, and actually, as much as I'm saying that, I don't want to give you the impression that this wears particularly heavily. It actually, um, has a good presence, but it's not particularly cloying or, or bombastic. Uh, some of the other fragrances I've talked about are much, you know, thicker and more, uh, persistent and tenacious. Uh, this actually wears pretty well in heat. Um, and I find frankincense generally does wear well in heat, too, because it, it can be one of these drier, smokier notes that, uh, as long as what it's accompanied with isn't too um, vanillic or sugary, it tends to, to kind of really glow and warm. Um, this is beautiful. It's, it's a beautiful, beautiful frankincense. Like I said, the rest of the structure is a little bit more um, sturdy than uh, clever, but, like, getting... The frankincense note to work as well as it does here. That's special. So that rounds out um, my journey with frankincense, excluding, of course, uh, the fragrance, the Holy Mountain, which, um, you know, I, I'm kind of bummed I didn't pull it out because the Holy Mountain is... Uh, if not the best treatment of frankincense as a note unto itself, my favorite one of my favorite fragrances overall, so kind of deserved to mention in this video, but you'll just have to go watch uh, my my 10 favorite fragrances video if you want to hear more about that one. So thanks for watching. Let me know what you think about frankincense. Let me know what your reference frankincense scents are. Um, let me know if you hate the note. I mean, I, I think there are plenty of us who do, and like I said, I didn't get along with it well at first either. And I'm, and thanks for watching. I always enjoy, um, you know, engaging with you, your, your wonderful comments, uh, after every video that releases, it's just so great to see how thoughtful so many of you are. And, uh, it's been really encouraging as this channel has been, uh, kind of getting back into its groove after the, the, you know, few years of, uh, rocky, inconsistent content. So, Thank you for watching, and I'll catch you in the next one.